fatty cutties, and I reckon they're the original fusion food because they resulted from the survivors of a Spanish galleon which uh, was part of the Spanish Armada. The Spanish galleon called the Grand Griffin and who eventually ended up in Westry and stayed. It is a fusion food because it's made in a gardo but it's like a Garibaldi biscuit and yet it's not. It's a wee bit like shortbread and not quite a gardo scone. It's easy to make. I've got here, I've got 115 grams of stock margarine. My friend Rita Stoot, who taught me how to make fatty cutties, reckons that stork's pretty good for making fatty cutties. I went to help her one day and I was amazed at how many girdles she had on the go at one time. I'm afraid I'm just going to have one on the go. Anyway, we've got 115 grams of stork margarine, 60 grams of caster sugar, give or take a few, a few grams, and I'm going to cream that up in the mixer for a couple of minutes. I'm now going to put in 175 grams, that's about 6 ounces of plain white flour, a pinch of bicarbonate of soda, generous pinch, and 60 grams, 2 ounces of currants. And just mix all this together in a slow speed to make a smooth dough. That the, you know that the dough is ready because the mixer starts to make a, a different noise and it'll all come together in a big lump and that's and the, the bowl's clean. So that's the fatty cutty dough ready to roll out. Now this was the bit that I found very difficult to understand. Well, now I think I've maybe got it. Rita reckon, I reckon that if you split this dough piece, if you make it into a good long oblong and you split it into three. I'm going to split it into three equal pieces. Right, the idea is you roll it out into a long strip, quite thin, you'll be amazed how thin it needs to be. And you make, look, roll it out into quite a thin strip, probably up to three and a half to four inches wide and I'm just going to check with my DIY tape. That's about four inches wide and then we want, want to cut it into fingers which are about one and a half inches lot a one and a half inches which are I still have to use this as a guide um, that's about it okay It should just barely turn golden and it's just got a nice warm heat to the, the palm of your hand and they'll come out. This is the that is the ideal colour for a fatty cutty. That is the absolute ideal colour for a fatty cutty. Rita might not agree, but I think that's as far as I can remember when she taught me that day in Westry. So I'm just going to pile them up. It's handy if you've got a cooling tray just beside you at your girdle so that you can cool them. They don't take long, they take about three or four minutes. You'll see, you can almost hear them sizzling and cooking on the girdle as they cook. And they do look a bit like a Garibaldi biscuit. Right, these are just ready to turn over. You need to watch and you do give them a quick flip over because they're quite, uh, because they're fatty cutties, they've got quite a lot of fat in them. So they're not as firm as a scone or a biscuit. So I'm just gonna flip them over. And hopefully these ones are a bit ready as well. These are a bit paler because the gar the, this girdle has only got a burner in the middle. Just turn these ones over and just leave them to firm up. And 
and it'll take another three or four minutes to cook on the other side. They cool very quickly because you'll find that the, um, the one that I showed you um, just a couple of minutes ago is now quite firm and breaks like a biscuit. But it's important to keep them just a tenth of a bitter taste, but if you keep them a nice golden colour, they'll keep for a while in an airtight container, and but not normally, because most folk, uh, when they make them, they, they find that they've eaten very quick. They always say the secret of a good biscuit is an empty plate, and the secret of a good fatty cutty is certainly an empty plate or box. Very quick to make. disappear even more quickly.